Hello everyone, it's good to see you all back. Today, we're going to tackle one of the most interesting exotic combos to get when using Choir of One. Did you know that this week only is the best time to farm for Strange Coins and Exotic Class Bonds? It's double loot week for Nightfalls, which means you'll get double the Strange Coins for each completion, which means you can buy and farm quite a bit of Class Bonds from Zer. Nice. And that's why today's video is going to be interesting, as I've gotten a Spear of Inmost Light and Harmony combo that pairs really well with Choir 1, and you're going to be the first to see it. Let's start with the general aim and the exotic of the build. Our aim is to showcase the exotic combo we have currently, and explain why these combos pair well with Choir 1. We also need to explain why this build is worth the investment. For this, we will be using Slipsium and Choir 1. Let's start with our exotic, Slipsium, with his exotic effect. It states, A Spear of Inmost Light, Using your ability will empower the other two abilities, letting them improve energy regeneration. The Spear of Harmony, a final blows with weapons that have matching damage type, like a super, will grant you super energy. So we are using both Heart of Imus Light and Battle Harmony within the build as one. While it's not the full version of the original copy, they both still operate under the same way. Hoyle works as intended and will reduce our ability cooldown. Since we have Feed the Void, a Fast of Hope, Balance, and our mods, we will be able to maintain a high usage of our abilities at all times. Harmony now will increase our super energy gain from kills made with our Void weapons. This is ideal for where the build is heading to, with the all ability cooldown aspect as presented. Since we are locked into our Void Super, which does have a high cooldown rate, it does benefit us a lot with how quickly we can use and abuse said super in game. Acquire 1 attacks are very powerful even without buffs applied to them, so for us to get our super up within 15 seconds isn't too far impossible. Our second exotic is Acquire 1 with this exotic effect, Command Frame, which states, A fire's extended range, heavy caliber projectiles at a reduced rate of fire. It deals increased precision damage when aiming down sights. A very powerful secondary weapon to use, the following is a match made in heaven for any users who enjoy ARs and shotguns built into one. We mentioned the best way to improve the weapon is to apply more damage, which is true, but also the best way to use the weapon fully is simply lean into its usage even more than normal. Like shown, our void weapons will be granted us not only kills and buffs as we play, but our super gen is vastly increased without the need of mods or fragments to help. Something like this can be useful in content where you want to spam your super quite a bit, like Nightfalls or even PvP. I haven't added any extra perks for it this time, but if possible, any substance perk will actually pay fairly well with what we're currently running. For Aspects and Fragments, we have the following. A the Void, where getting an ability kill will grant you Devour. Helion, where casting your class ability will produce a solar mortar that scorches targets and also ignites them. A fast sort of Sacrifice, where having a solar, void, or arc buff can grant you extra darkness transcendence energy from ability final blows. A fast of hope, where while having an element of buff, your class ability will regenerate quickly. A fast of dominance, where your void grenades weaken targets, while your arc grenades jolts them. A fast of balance, where rapidly defeating targets with light abilities grants mini damage. Rapidly defeating targets with dark abilities grants grenade damage. And fast of bravery, where defeating targets with grenades grants volatile rounds to void weapons. Defeating targets with power mini hits will grant unraveling rounds to strand weapons. Everything fits well into what we are aiming for when using our weapons a lot. The dominance and bravery will make using our void weapons apply extra damage over time, which can be useful when facing multiple mages and above enemies at once. A balance and hope will keep our abilities alive when paired with spear in most light, so this is highly recommended for the long-term gains. A fast of sacrifice is 50-50, as for me, it allows me to maintain a steady pace for getting our transcendence form up quickly, with the lack of darkness energy. However, swapping my primary for a strand or stasis weapon, or even just relying on our melee should be enough to achieve the same goal, but at a slower rate. I would say though that increasing survivability more will be helpful down the line, if we get into a situation where we are surrounded. We don't have a solo super this time, and I have added a resist mod to help, but for extra safety, you can add the fast up protection mod, 
which should help with reducing the income and damage while surrounded. That or Solitude is also good if you intend to weaken enemies damage output on a consistent basis. The choice will vary of course. For the modern stats, we have both Resilience and Discipline marks our top priority. Resilience, we have ours at tier 10 for 30% damage reduction. I have added a solo resistance for this week's Nightfall and enemies I face, but this can be swapped around depending on the enemies you face. A facile protection is also good if you have the room to apply it. A discipline, we have ours at tier 10 for a 1 minute 1 second cooldown via Storm Grenades. Storm Grenades have a much more wider AoE radius compared to most of the grenades we have, which makes it useful for clearing out or disrupting large groups quickly. Applying dominance to the build will grant our art grenades the draw effect, which will greatly enhance the already powerful grenade that's provided. With our fast cooldown for all of our abilities, this build should feel pretty satisfactory for the long term vets and the newer players. Now, I would recommend you add these extra mods just to help up some more. Impact Induction times 1 for a 12% grenade buff, Momentum Transfer times 1 for a 12% mini buff, Bolstering Detonation times 1 for a 12% class ability buff, and Distribution for a 4% all ability buff will be suitable for the build. Now, for the additional mods, we have the following Kinetic Siphon for creating all the power via kinetic weapons. Charged up times 1 for increasing the maximum stack of armor charges by plus 1. Avoid weapon surge times 1 for a 10% void weapon buff. Void holster times 1 for automatically reloading our void weapons after stowing them. A powerful attraction for automatically collecting all the power when using our class ability. And special to heavy finder. Reserves and scavenger ammo mods for the void weapons we are using. As we have covered our exotic secondary weapon, I would then advise you to pick some super weapons for the build as well. These are all optional, but do hold some benefits towards the build. In primary, we have the Chattering Bone Pulse Rifle with Kill Clip and Kinetic Tremors. A raid exclusive pulse that has had some new perks applied to it quite a while back. The following isn't the best combo to have for this, since Kinetic Tremors is pretty decent damage perk already, and Kill Clip has a short time frame to use it. However, both can be quite useful if you're dealing with a mixture of enemies all at once. So if you are a free to play player, you probably won't be able to get this weapon just on yet. So getting the battle scar with the following perks is the closest you can get to having something similar as shown. This can be gotten from Banshee. For heavy, we have the hammerhead with rampage and onslaught. This is a ad clearing weapon through and through, but it can be a boss DPS weapon if you can manage your buffs correctly. This pairing is very underrated at the moment, as once you get Onslaught active and going with Rampage, it clears up all sorts of enemies in a matter of seconds. For free to play players, this is a relatively easy weapon to get, so be sure to farm this given weapon as you can get quite a few interesting rolls from it down the line. When it comes to solo content as a warlock, we all know the struggles are real. One of the biggest challenges is survivability. How do you stay alive against a swarm of enemies when you don't have a team to back you up? Another issue is damage output. How do you take down a tough enemy quickly when you're the only one dishing out the damage? And then there's resource management. How do you keep your ability fueled when you don't have a team to provide support? Resource management is a huge point for warlocks, especially in solo play. We rely on our melee abilities and grenades to deal damage, but when solo, we have to be more precise with the equipment we are using so everything can stay afloat. This build here manages to provide both support and damage all in one in the most simplest way possible. Our Zotta class bond with the Hoyle and Harmony makes a perfect combo when pairing this with Choir 1, as the consistent energy recharge we are getting for all of our abilities will be on show. In fact, this is one of the best exotics to use if you want to invest heavily into your void weapons all the time. Well, for now, I guess. Its ease of use allows us to expand the mods and fragments to focus on the survivability of the setup, so we can survive solo endgame content without the need of allies around. All of this at the end of the day just requires you to use your weapon like normal, and you'll see just how powerful the setup can really get. Now, let me show you how this build comes together in practice. In this clip, you can see me take down a wave of enemies with ease, using my void super and weapons to generate super energy and take down tough enemies quickly. Notice how I'm able to stay mobile and avoid taking too much damage, 
while still dishing out massive amount of damage to the enemy, is pretty great at what it generally does. So how does this build stack up? In my testing, I was able to complete the activity with ease, taking down the final boss without breaking too much of a sweat. Of course, it still requires some skill and practice, but with the build, you'll be well on your way to customizing your choir 1 to its ultimate prismatic form, in the easiest way possible. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. While if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos, then leave a like and a sub while you're here. A dim link for the build is located below in the pin section, and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.